What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again race car fans. Today we're going all the way back to NASCAR in the 1990s where we're going to take a look at this amazing AMT Ertl Country Time Grand Prix. This model kit is a 125th scale model and you'll need paint and glue to put it all together. On this side of the box we get the excellent model kit specifications for our Country Time Grand Prix. And here we also get a nice side view of the car just so that we get our model kit right. And I will list this out in the comment section down below so you can give it a nice read. On this side of the box we get some photographs of the real car to use for reference which is always nice. We've got these authentic decals, the complete racing chassis and suspension here, our detailed 350 inch cubic inch engine, and then we've got our completely detailed interior. So let's remove the lid off this box and see what's inside this bad boy. So here we go. Now right away I've got the instructions lying on the top. It says that I received this as a door prize at the AMB contest in March 13th, 1994. That's a long time ago. Probably one of the first model car contests that I entered back in the day. So I'll let Danny show you those instructions later. Here we've got our front glass, or our glass components, clear components. Now it does look like I was working on this back in the past. So there's our NASCAR body, nice and slick looking. There's our uh, roll cage and our chassis. And then we've got our hood. Yeah, I was working on this because all the parts are loose. So there's our parts tree there. We've got these wonderful tires. And then as you can see, we've got a ton of parts underneath. We've got our chrome there and that big gigantic decal sheet. So I'm gonna clear this out of the way and arrange the parts while Danny shows you those instructions. So here we have our Country Time Maxwell House Pontiac. Maxwell House, hmm, good to the last drop. As you can see here, we've got a big write-up on the whole car, its history, and everything else that's cool about it. And on the lower part of the instructions, we get to see all the tools that we're gonna need and the building tips for the advanced modeler. Now the panels on this instruction sheet are nice and big, so even if you have difficulty seeing like Trevor does, uh, uh, it's easy to see all the parts that are in here. So there we've got our right and left hand side engine block with the oil pan being glued up from underneath. There's our water pump and our cylinder heads for both left and right hand side. We've got a chrome valve cover up here. We've got an intake manifold and our carburetor. We complete this really amazing looking engine in panel two by dropping our air cleaner on the carburetor, putting in our distributor, our crankcase breathers in here. There should be four, I think. Uh, shift linkage going on the side here. Then we've got our two piece headers for both right and left hand side, our alternator and our belt and pulley assembly and our fan and an upper radiator hose as well. Panel three shows our super detailed NASCAR interior going together. We've got our fuel cell, which glues into the back of the chassis, our front seat, our pedals, a firewall, the engine will drop in place. We've got a two piece radiator, two piece shift lever, a fire extinguisher and a blower motor. What will they think of next? Look at all the pieces you get in panel four. There's our roll cage with the left and right hand side. Look at all the braces in here. I can't even see these properly. There's so many braces. You even get a trunk crash bar. They've all been uh, named in here too. So all that will drop in and there's even a front end crash bar which goes right here just in front of the radiator. So in panel five, we've got this note that says to install parts 34 and 36 after dash and steering assemblies. So here's all our parts. Oh, I can see why, because that goes up on the top here. There's a top center brace and a top front brace. We've got this chrome mirror sitting here, our dashboard panel. There's the dashboard and instrument panel itself. And then we've got our steering shaft and steering wheel, our interior closure and this oil compartment. Again, all the paint colors are being pointed to right on the parts here. This is going to look really cool once it gets all together. Panel six shows our wheel assembly. Now there's four of this type of outer wheel. That's because they're all the same in NASCAR. And then we've got our nice slick tire here. These are good years again. Now the back is split in between two things. So this is the inner rear wheel and this is the inner front wheel. And the front wheel has a little axle pin. And there's a little note here off screen. It says, leave outer wheel chrome or paint it blue. And here we have panel seven. 
And this is the undercarriage of our chassis going together now. We've got the steering shaft and we've got the, uh, oh, that's the steering shaft there. The steering gearbox, the lower suspension, the springs. There's going to be one on each side, guys. And then we've got our uprights here and disc brakes in the front. And then we put our front wheels on. There's shock absorbers and upper A-arms all as well. That's really highly detailed. Panel 8 sure looks great. We've got our exhaust dumps here in two pieces. You paint those flat white. We've got our trailing arms and we've got our rear coil springs, our rear axle housing in two pieces. There's a metal axle that will go right through. You've also got disc brakes on the back and then your assembled tire. And down here we've got a little uh, rear subframe and shock absorbers and the oil pump and our drive shaft as well. Panel 9 is where the body meets the chassis. It says note paint trunk hood front bumper and trunk lid bright yellow as a unit. I like to kind of keep them separate but uh, you know you got to keep them separated right. So there's our windshield, our rear window, side windows, there's our deck lid, our rear spoiler, our rear bumper, our front bumper, the body, and the rear view mirror again. I, th I thought we already put that in. Well, at any rate, there it all is, and that's how it's going to look. We got some really cool NASCAR accessories in panel 10. Here's a two-piece fuel can, and we also have a three-piece hydraulic jack. That's got a lot of chrome in it. 506 and 508, those are chrome numbers. Same as 507. So this will look really cool, but I don't think they actually put these in the trunk. So they just go off to the side. Our final panel shows the decal location. We've got our front nose here with the uh, decals for the headlamps and the Pontiac Grand Prix decal. All these sponsors over here. And then if we look down below, look at how many you get. This actually uh, covers the whole back of the instruction sheet. We've got the number 30 decal, the Maxwell House decal, the country time on the back, country time on the sides. I mean, man, this is a decal masterpiece. I can't wait till the end of the video where I actually get to show you what the decal sheet looks like in full color. So stay tuned for that. And now, let's look at the parts. Now let's give it up for the amazing Danny the dog. Isn't he special? Yay! All right, anyway, here we are with the body. And as you can see, it is really slick. I mean, there's no uh, door handles or anything like that on here, but that's okay because you need an aerodynamic shape to go through the NASCAR oval track so fast. So this looks really authentic, really amazing work, even though it is quite simplified. And it does look like I actually sanded this up ready for paint. So there could have been some uh, flash on here. I'm not quite sure. I do see that there are mold marks on the inside of the roof. Now my younger self, of course, wouldn't have removed those, but if I get back into this kit, I can easily do that. A couple of mold marks up front and I don't know about the back, but there is the trunk lid. And as you can see, it's got the little ridge in here so that the lid will sit nicely on the ridge inside the car. So if you're building your own trunks, opening up trunks, always remember to put in that little piece of plastic just for the trunk lid to sit down on properly. Well, since I've already clipped out all the parts from the parts tree in this kit, I might as well show you the body accessories. So there's that front bumper and it almost looks like a BMW, doesn't it? You got that little nose in the front and then a little side thing here for more cooling. This will go up under the front like that. You can see that the uh, fit is quite nice on these. I know I'm trying to balance it with my fingers. It's not quite the best way to do it. There's our hood. Again, beautifully drops into place. The gapping on there is excellent. Looks like the real thing. Okay, then we've got our trunk lid. Like I said, it all sits on that sill. So again, very nicely done. This little groove is for that spoiler that glues in. I don't know where that is right now. And then we've got our rear bumper here, which again will fit nicely onto the back of the car. There are a couple little tabs here for it to uh, lock into on the inside, so that's always nice. Yeah, I can see where they say paint this as a unit because you could easily just glue on these bumpers and uh, spray it with your spray paint. And always remember when you spray with spray paint, paint it on like the rain. You want to start from the top and then turn it to the side, spray along the back, spray along this side, and spray the front. And always remember, never swing your wrist go straight across like this. 
every time. Now here we have the chassis and I did start to glue panels on here as you can see. There's our firewall that was glued into place and the little fuel cell in the back of the trunk. But look at the detail, look at how, how nicely this is molded. All those wonderful crisp deep lines and everything. This is really what the uh, Pontiac would look like if you pulled all the carpet and everything up and out of it. Again, also I bet reinforced for NASCAR. Maybe the stock Pontiac doesn't quite have all these ribs on it. Actually, I don't think it would. Uh, full perimeter frame in here. Boy, really excellent and really crisp. That's one thing I noticed about this kit. It is really crisp. Look at that fuel tank right there. Look how nice that is. This is 1990 technology from AMT, everybody. That's just how cool it is. So I'll move this out of the way for a moment because here is the frame. Or, sorry, the roll cage. I guess roll cage frame. Ha <laughs> ha! I win. Okay, there's the netting on the side as well. That's the safety netting so the driver doesn't go flying out. Actually, I've got a driver figure. I should uh, build him up and stick him in this kit. Even though I think he's a monogram figure, but hey, who's going to know? Oh, you guys know, because I just told you. Ha <laughs> um, ha! One thing here is, you've, there's seam lines that are inside all the caging. That was always a big problem with the Joe Hand kits. But you've got to take your hobby knife as best as you can and scrape all that out to make it nice and smooth and round. So what I like to do on that is uh, hold it in one position. So scrape along the top and always remember where you're going. So do the top first, scrape, 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 scrape. And then turn it, do this side, one, scrape your seam lines, then turn it upside down, scrape your seam lines, and then, uh, where was I? This way, scrape your seam lines. So you're going in a, a circle and you're gonna make sure you get all those nice seam lines. So this is only partially done because the side braces are not in place, but here's how it would go on the actual car. And you notice there's these little uh, extensions out here. They actually slot right in and go into this well. So this is a really cool model. It's gonna build up really nice. I can, I can feel it in my bones. <laughs> so anyway, that's what it looks like. Let us know if you've built this in the past or any of these AMT NASCAR kits from this era and uh, just how nicely they were and how much you actually like them. Now here we have the rest of the interior components. These are all braces for the uh, tube framing. This is the one that goes in the front. You can see a nice little uh, box here, radiator box thing. So that's pretty cool. Sadly, it looked like a mold mark right in the center of that. There's another one of the braces. This is our steering column, another cross brace. And then we've got our bucket seat. This is the top of the dashboard. That's the actual instrument panel. Not 100% sure what this panel is. I think it's another one of the braces. There's the oil tank. There's the uh, blower, our front pedals, fire extinguisher. This is the top of the fuel tank thing. And then we've got our rear spoiler. I did find that. There are some mold marks on the bottom of that spoiler, so you gotta get rid of those. Take a look at that seat detail. That's really nice in there. Looks like the real buckets. Sorry for my shadow in the way. There it is off the back, another mold mark right there. So again, my younger self didn't know about cleaning those off. My older self does. So my older self is gonna finish this kit for my younger self. <laughs> There's the blower motor. And look at the dashboard. Look at the nice instruments that are on there. That's pretty cool, just like the real thing. Only smaller. On that panel for the dash, they've got notches, buenos notches for all the uh, cross braces that are going in there. And then buenos dios for there. I think that's the way that goes. So yeah, looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Wouldn't you like to have one of these? Yes, yes I think you would. There's our fire extinguisher. Gotta paint that red. But it uh, looks great. All these components look really good, and I'm really proud of AMT at this era for making such a fine model. Here we have our suspension components and our engine components, as well as our wheel backs and cooling system. So there's that rear brace. We've got our oil pan here, our cylinder heads, our uh, upper radiator hose, our timing chain cover, our intake manifold, our engine block, which I have glued together. Doesn't look like I've actually cleaned this up much, but as you can see, it is a nice fit. It's got the transmission molded onto the back as well. 
There's our springs, front, front and rear coil springs. Then we've got our wheel backs. This is uh, one style with the pin on the back, and there's the front one for the little pin to go into. There's our drive shaft and our sway bars, the front upper sus or lower suspension, yeah, and then the upper A arms here. There's our exhaust dump going off the side, that's the bottom of it, and then our radiator. And I'm just going to bring up the radiator because I really want you to see this. Look at how exact this thing is. This is like a real race car radiator. Whoops, the detail in the meshwork is excellent. I don't think I've ever seen a better radiator done than this one. So again, really cool work from good old AMT Ertl. Now of the parts trees that are actually remaining in my model, we have our distributor on here, and then we've got our exhaust pipes. These ones are actually wrapped in that fireproof uh, tape stuff. And then we've got our steering wheel, our shock absorbers, and the mystery part. I think that's our power steering. Well, oh, there's also these two little dots that are here. Not sure what those are. Those are the axle pins? I don't know. Anyway, be that as it may, look at um, the nice detailing work on the headers. You can see that, uh, that fireproof tape that they wrap the headers in. That's pretty cool. So you can either paint these white or black. I don't think I've ever seen any other colors on these other than that for that tape stuff. But overall, I mean, it looks really good. And a couple of mold marks on the insides here. Just scrape them down so that uh, this will glue nice and flat against the engine block and you should be okay. This gray parts tree includes our shock absorbers, our fan, and the little kingpin steering assembly. There's our pins for those front wheels. I did find them, so I'm not sure what those little dot things were. I have to look it up. There's the cross brace for the transmission, which Danny did not point out in the instructions. And then there's our first accessory of the fuel can. So again, take a look at how nice these are. Really wonderful parts. Again, there's our little pins on there with the little webs or the little pins on our pins <laughs> for our front disc brakes. Again, there's that nice fuel filler. So that's really, really cool. Really cool. Send in the chrome. We like the chrome. Send in the clowns. That's what the song is. <laughs> okay, but uh, we don't want clowns. So what we want is really highly detailed chrome parts from AMT. And if you want them, you got them. Look at this. The uh, steel wheels here, the NASCAR slotted wheels actually have slots you can see right through. And there's no flash in there. This is excellent. This is not your regular flash in the pan model kit. <laughs> Look at the uh, cylinder head covers, valve covers. Those are really nice. And then we've got our uh, alternator and our uh, alternator actually has a bracket on it which is really nice there's that jack so again jack up the 80s jack up the 90s there's our air cleaner and our gear shift lever in the two pieces look at that uh, that air filter molded on the side there it's actually just open in the front around there and then sealed smooth in the back here there see and see so really, really good. AMT's done an excellent job on this little teeny chrome parts tree. Far better than any other chrome parts tree actually reviewed on this channel. Here we have our clear components for our Grand Prix Pontiac, our Country Time Pontiac. These windows have the braces in them so that if the car actually rolls over in the NASCAR race in the real world, the glass doesn't shatter in on the driver, which is cool. And then we've got some clear hoses and this thing here. This looks like some kind of filler pipe. I don't really know where it is in the model. I didn't see it, but boy, it's pretty cool actually. This should be, I, I, this has got to be for the fuel filter or the fuel line, pardon me, not the filter because it just looks that way. <laughs> anyway, there's our windows. Now, the sad part is these weren't in a bag. So again, they got a little bit scuffed, but um, I don't know. You can polish that out with some wax. Again, the idea is to paint on the inside of the glass. So be careful doing this. You could mask it in here. I don't know, it looks complicated to me. You could do it freehand. Hope your hand doesn't wobble like mine does. But overall, this is the glass you get in the kit.
Now here we have our Goodyear Blue Streak Stock Car Special Tires. These are really amazing actually. They have no tread because they're slicks. And what I did with these is I used my sanding tool and I sanded them out in the drill. There we go there, they just pop on. Use your sandpaper block, put that in your uh, electric drill and spin away. Now these tires would look really great with either the Goodyear painted with white or even yellow because this was about the era when they started to use the yellow lettered tires. Again, really, really awesome. So I'm going to bring back Danny the dog to take a look at those instructions. <whistles> Danny, come on, it's time for instructions. You go, dog. Okay, I'm here and I'm going, dog. All right, we got our Maxwell House Country Time decals. This one goes on the hood. There's the one for the front. We've got these on the side behind the tire. These are the ones that go in the middle of the car. And you don't have to worry about trying to hook up all the sponsor de decals in a nice coherent manner because here they are done for you by AMT. We've also got some black Goodyear logos that go on there. And there's the country time for the back. Really excellent stuff. Look at them all. Uh, you're going to really have to cut close here though, just to remove any of the silvering that's going to occur on those edges. But overall, this is a Pontiac and it builds excitement. Danny, those decals were really amazing. I'll be doggone. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this great AMT Ertl 1990 Pontiac Grand Prix Country Time NASCAR. Is this the first time you've actually seen this kit unboxed? If so, let us know. And if you have built these in the past, I also want to know how you enjoyed building it. It is a fun kit. I, I guess I had fun when I was putting it together when I was a bit younger. Although, I can't remember when I actually did that. <laughs> but anyway, there's still more for me to build in this, so maybe in a future video I will do that. But if you want to buy your own model car and you don't know where to go, I've got a great website. It's mine www.monster-hobbies.ca We've got a whole bunch of cars from all different eras, including a lot of NASCARs. Not necessarily this one, but others. <laughs> That's always cool, so go check that out again. www.monster-hobbies.ca I'm going to leave a little link you can click on it at the end of the video. Thank you everybody for watching our model car unboxing video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. And if you really want to show your support, click that join button right below this video. Until next time everyone, happy model building!